Now time for members' statements. Member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to, to draw your awareness to a very serious situation. And I think all of you in this House would agree that there's nothing more honourable than being elected by constituents to represent them here at the Ontario Legislative Assembly. We cannot take that responsibility for granted, nor should we be playing games with it. But unfortunately, there are a number of people from Godreach, from my riding of Huron Bruce, that are furious with a, with a particular member who had chose to play games with a devastating event that wreaked havoc on their community August 2011. Last, last week, in response to a sincere question speaker, the Minister of Environment and Climate Change chose to possibly mock me by saying, do, if you do not support this cap and trade, would you like to expose your constituents to another tornado? I'm paraphrasing a notch, Speaker, but that was the gist of it. The people in Godrich are furious, and they say, how dare can an elected official make fun of a devastating event that absolutely tore a town and families apart? Speaker, I expect better of the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, and I do ask sincerely for an apology for the town of Godrich. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Speaker, and welcome to this local newscast. Let's start off with a good news story. For the eighth time in the past 10 years, well the town of Tecumseh has ranked within the top 10 of Canada's safest communities. Statistics Canada does the ranking, and for safe communities with more than 10,000 residents, Tecumseh is rated number six in the country. Essex County Warden Tom Bain is recovering from a nasty spill while jogging one of his racehorses. Warden Bain suffered four broken ribs, a crushed collarbone, and a broken bone in his back. Tom, we need you. Get well soon. And we're thinking of you up here at Queen's Park. And while we're thinking of the mayor and councillors in Leamington as well, Speaker, condolences go out to the family of Leamington Councillor Rick Atkin. Rick died suddenly of natural causes last week, and we will miss him in our region. Tomorrow, as you know, is the National Day of Mourning. Too many workers continue to be killed on the job. We must do more to make workplace safety a priority in this province. Ceremonies highlighting this will be held across Ontario tomorrow. I'll be here and miss the one in Windsor, but later this year, I hope to introduce a private member's bill that will call for the lowering of flags at all schools, hospitals, municipal buildings, colleges and universities on the day of mourning. And that, Speaker, is the latest news from Windsor to Company. Back to you in the anchor desk. Thank you. Member of Statements. I'm kind of liking this. Member of Statements. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise to discuss a constituent of mine who faces a daily battle to breathe. Dean Sellers is a resident of Cambridge who suffers from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, which inhibits his ability to live a normal life. COPD is a disease causing chronically poor airflow to the lungs, making it extremely difficult to breathe. COPD tends to worsen over time. The Ontario Lung Association states that over 850,000 Ontarians aged 35 or older suffer from COPD, and that includes my son Rory, now age 35. They struggle with each breath they take. The Ontario Lung Association is raising awareness about COPD and encouraging Ontarians to have a spirometry test, which is effective in early diagnosis, key to treatment later on. Dean's COPD has deteriorated, and now he has just 14 per cent lung capacity. He requires an oxygen tank to breathe, but even then, it's difficult. Dean's family organized a fundraiser on April 18th at the Cambridge Newfoundland Club to raise money to help him and his wife, Sue, to cope with its disease. Dean is currently awaiting a double lung transplant, and he is looking forward, as he told me that evening, to spending time with his children and grandchildren for many years to come. 
Dean's story reminds us of the importance of organ donation. Only 25 per cent of Ontarians are registered as organ donors, and I want to encourage all Ontarians to sign up today at beadonor.ca. One organ donor can save eight lives. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamets, the member from Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This weekend, I had the privilege of attending the Soldiers of Songs performance at the Listowel Legion. Their performance was a tribute to the Dumbbells, the pioneers of sketch comedy. In 1917, around Vimy Ridge, a group of soldiers came together to form a comedy and musical troupe called the Dumbbells. They, they entertained Canadian troops during the First World War with humorous songs and sketches about life in the trenches. After the war, the Dumbbells toured Canada as professional entertainers. They became the first ever Canadian production to score a hit on Broadway. The Dumbbells' journey is now being celebrated in Dr. Jason Wilson's musical play, Soldiers of Song. Soldiers of Song is a Canadian theatre show that travels around the world celebrating the Dumbbells. The show was a wonderful tribute to the soldiers who entertained their comrades and boosted morale through the First World War. I would like to thank the Alyssa Legion and the North Perth Arts Council for bringing the show to Perth Wellington. I would also like to recognize Listowel native Andrew Knowlton, who performs in this show. I would encourage everyone to go and see the Soldiers of Song and learn more about these Canadian entertainers. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavitz. Member Stavitz. Okay, I'm a chicken going on here. Uh, member from Sudbury. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today on behalf of the people of Sudbury to recognize Senator Marie Chadette Poulain, who stepped down as Senator for the Northern Ontario region on April 17th due to health reasons. Senator Chadette Poulain was born and raised in Sudbury and, of course, in Halebury as well. But before being appointed to the Senate in 1995, she had an exemplary career as a public servant. She founded the CBC's Northern Ontario French Services as well as the radio station CBON. She later went on to serve, among other roles, as the Vice President of the CBC and the Deputy Clerk of the Privy Council. In the Senate, she was always an advocate for Northern Ontario and, in particular, our Francophone community in the North. And In 2006, Mr. Speaker, she became the first Francophone woman to be President of the Liberal Party of Canada. Thank you to Senator Jeanette Poulin for speaking for Francophones in Ontario. The people of Sudbury and Ontario, thank you for your years of service. It's that I could speak to about Senator Poulin attending, but the one that was, I think, most important was the one last year in which all of us attended at the Cooperative Funeral Hall the renaming of a new memorial for all of our fallen soldiers that were killed in Afghanistan, and that was something that uh, Senator Poulain was very proud to attend, and we all thank her for her years of public service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. I uh, rise to celebrate a uh, great initiative that has truly captured the hearts of leaders of Leeds, Grenville. On May the 8th, hundreds of people from my riding and beyond will gather at Centennial Road Church to take part in LeaderCast 2015. I've had the privilege of attending the Brockville LeaderCast in the past. It is truly an inspiring day. Last uh, Speaker, uh, that remarkable turnout uh, that we've had, the 400 people, is a real tribute to the hard work of local organizers. But it also says something about our community. Leeds Grenville is renowned as a place where people roll up their sleeves to support a good cause. The reason is we're blessed with so many people ready to accept the responsibility of leadership. They come from all walks of life and contribute in many ways, but they share a common trait, the desire and courage to be a champion for positive change. I'm a great supporter of LeaderCast because the message from the incredible lineup of speakers is all about empowering people to be even more effective leaders. This year's theme, The Brave Ones, has speakers that include Peyton Manning, uh, Malala Yousafzai, and Rudy Giuliani. Unfortunately, a previous commitment has caused me not to be able to attend this year's LeaderCast, but to those that are attending, I want to thank you for taking time to be involved, and I'm so excited to see what great things LeaderCast 2015 inspires you to do. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavitz, the member from Nickelville. Thank you, Speaker. I'm happy to rise again today to draw attention to my constituents 
in, the, in Gogama who are trying to work through the aftermath of the butamin spill that occur in their community on March 7. For people down here, Gogama is easy to forget. But for the people of Gogama, as the ice starts to melt and the waters in the bay show signs of oil floating on top, the worries are constant. Local citizens have questions about their community's future. As a community on the shore of the Makami River and the beautiful Lake Minisawaki, their future lies in that water's health and its ability to continue to support surrounding wildlife and their environment. The people of Gogama are asking for support from their provincial government. They want help with the environmental assessment and all this data and the interpretation of it. They want help putting a dollar figure on their loss. They want their provincial governments to pay attention to them and acknowledge that they exist, that they're struggling right now, and that they need help. Right now, Gogama, all by themselves, are trying to hold CN to account. A community of 200 strong holding a multi-million dollar corporation to account. This is a David and Goliath battle. The provincial government needs to step in. It is the responsibility of the provincial government to hold CN to account. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to tell you about a wonderful initiative in my community called Kingston Gets Active Month. Sponsored by the Canadian Sport for Life Kingston and funded by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, the program challenges us in four simple ways to eat healthier, connect more, be more mindful, and get more active. Being healthy could mean using more local fresh fruits and vegetables for their nutrients and drinking more water. Connecting more might mean volunteering with an organization or a charity or joining a YMCA or sports club. If you work behind a desk, being mindful might involve getting up and changing positions every few minutes. Being more active could mean leaving the car at home or walking or using a bike instead. Or it could mean squeezing a walk into your workday. Mr. Speaker, this month I encouraged members of the public to join me on an hour pre-lunchtime walk and chat, and I hosted two public hikes at a local conservation area. I feel wonderful having done it, and I'm proud to say that I've done almost 7,000 steps today. <laughs> I'm determined to try and continue. I'm happy that so many local businesses and agencies joined in to offer free activities for people of all ages during Kingston and the Gets Active Month. I want to congratulate the wonderful Canadian Sport for Life team, Laura Peterson, Mary Jane Gordon, Denita Arthurs, Chris Evle, Ashley Johnson, Kristen Cote, Lyndon Whitfield, and Jennifer Ashbury, who have worked so hard to foster lifelong health and wellness by increasing the opportunities for play and physical activity in our great community. Merci. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. I rise uh, on behalf of all members of the legislature on all three parties to extend our heartfelt prayers, condolences, and pledge of support to the people of Nepal. As you will know, Speaker, very recently they suffered a once-in-a-century level earthquake, apparently 7.8 on the Richter scale. The imagery and the videos and the testimonials are simply heartbreaking. So far, we understand that the death toll exceeds 5,000, and the damage to the cultural artifacts, to the buildings, to the already modest infrastructure of the country in its capital, Kathmandu, and as well uh, surrounding areas is really uh, uh, perhaps of epic proportions. Canada has stepped up to the plate speaker Government of Canada, we thank them for the $5 million commitment, and they've discharged the, uh, the DART team, the disaster uh, relief team. Uh, I can also tell you that right from Etobicoke, this, uh, we house the Global Medic, which is perhaps a, an echo of the DART disaster relief team. They have also dispatched food and aid and people on the ground and personnel and water pur purification, etc. Uh, I would simply say on behalf, once again, of the people uh, of Ontario, to the people of Nepal, we stand with you in your time of need. Thank you, here, Speaker. Here. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements, and before. I